What's up guys? Today's episode is with Chris Hoffman, a former Marine who struggled with transition as so many of us do, and then put a bunch of money into personal development and built a bunch of big businesses, and now he runs the Vet Training and Coaching and the Ambitious Vet Podcast. And Chris is on a mission to really just help you out with achieving your maximum potential. So he's a performance coach. Episode is just loaded with value. Definitely stick through all the way to the end. Now, I'm excited about this. If this is your first time joining us, thank you for joining the community. If not, welcome back. As always, show notes are found at from militarytomillionaire.com slash podcast. Now, relax and enjoy the show. You're listening to the Military Millionaire Podcast, a show about real estate investing for the working class. Stay tuned as we explore ways to help you improve your finances, build wealth through real estate, and become a person that is worth knowing. Hey guys, on this podcast, we talk a lot about the roadblock to success for military members in getting started in real estate investing. For many of us, the barriers of time, location, and not having the right knowledge keep us from building wealth while serving our country. Well, let me tell you about Storehouse 310 Ventures. They get it. Storehouse 310 Ventures is owned by two active duty naval officers that love to make investing fun, lucrative, and have a passion for education, theirs and yours alike. They offer full turnkey rental properties in a market where the numbers make sense, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yes, Milwaukee, home to the almost 2018 division titled Milwaukee Brewers, the well-known Miller Brewing Company, and a lot of delicious cheese. Storehouse 310's properties are fully renovated, leased, and have property management in place. Through their rigorous analysis and selection process, they do everything possible to ensure each rental property meets their high standards and offers fantastic returns. Storehouse 310's allows you to invest with confidence while you are living out of state. They have a network of lenders, insurance companies, contractors, a title company, and much more to serve you all along the way. There is absolutely no reason not to get started when you have the right teams and system in place. David and Stu, the owners of Storehouse 310, have been investing themselves for over 15 years. They are on a mission to help as many active duty, reserves, and military veterans create financial freedom through the power of real estate investing. They are honest, transparent, and they prioritize service and giving. They have even committed to give the first 10% of their profits to partner nonprofit organizations that support veteran causes. For more information about their program, send an email to podcast at storehouse310turnkey.com. Again, that is podcast at storehouse310turnkey.com. Tell David and Stu you heard about them through the Military Millionaire podcast, and they will get you going down the right path. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Dave from Military to Millionaire, and I'm here with Chris Hoffman, who is the founder of Vet Training Coaching and the host of the Ambitious Vet podcast also a Marine, so we obviously hit it off on that. And I'm going to let him introduce himself, and then we're going to talk about his story and uh, what he does, because it's pretty cool. So, Chris, welcome aboard. Dave, man, it's ex- I'm excited to be here, man. I was listening to an episode before this. We were talking offline. I just, I, I just acknowledge you, man. Being a Marine, we all know that the frequency that we have to perform our daily tasks every single day, man, and for you to be doing this in the trenches on top of you know, your relationships and, uh, you know, just really doing what you need to be a Marine day in and day out, man. I just acknowledge you for making this impact, man. It's an honor to be here. I appreciate it, brother. That means a lot. We actually joined the Marine Corps, like right around the same. When did you go to boot camp in 08? I didn't ask. So I uh, went over here in San Diego. So I was on the uh, west side of the Mississippi. I was originally raised from St. Charles, Missouri, which is a small town outside of St. Louis. Um, and, uh, there just wasn't much to do there. Right. Uh, There was a lot of cornfields. So we found ourselves, um, in cornfields, you having a lot of fun, you know, four wheeling with big trucks, which probably led to me being a motor T operator in the Marine Corps, which I was driving big trucks, living the dream. I really wonder if we've run into each other before there's got, so I'm motor T and we, we probably were sitting at Maplatoon around Christmas of 08, 09, like the same time in the same location. There's a pretty good chance if we play this where have you been game that anyway, we could do that sometime when we're not recording, but uh, I actually recruited in Springfield, Missouri. So I'm, I'm familiar with where St. Charles is. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. A lot of country boys that want to get out of a small town. That's for sure. Small world. Yeah. So tell us, uh, give us a little bit about your story and uh, what led you up to where you're at now helping veterans. Yeah. So Dave, thanks, man. So, I mean, um, you know, I was originally, as I said, from St. Charles, Missouri, a small town country boy that, um, you know, was born without 
you know, my father left me when I was one. My whole life was, um, you know, sped up very quickly. I had to start becoming a father figure to my two younger brothers that decided to come into me and my mother's life at, when I was seven. And I had to start growing up way quicker. So I, I tell a, a lot of people that, you know, I didn't really have that childhood, but I had to become a man quicker than I was ready to. So, you know, to kind of speed up the story real quickly, I, uh, you know, I, I started my first business when I was 13 years old, had a, you know, a lawn business where I had a couple of buddies of mine in middle school and even fresh, freshman and sophomore year of high school, we were mowing lawns at $20 a pop just to help my mom that was working three jobs for my, her three boys. And um, I felt like I had to carry that because I saw my mom trying to find love and, you know, really just, you know, support her three boys, which is the only thing that mattered to her. So, you know, speed up it a little bit in high school. I was uh, a guy that was a baseball stud, great at defense, was horrible at offense. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, had to get humbled quick and realize that that was not my life, my next mission, my life purpose. And, um, you know, surprisingly after I graduated high school, I fell into a deep, dark, um, depression where I became like an alcoholic and I was drinking, um, a lot of alcohol, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of Jack Daniels. Um, and, um, I was just coming home and just like picking fights with, you know, um, at that time, my stepfather, that was just extremely abusive to my younger brothers and uh, me and stuff like that. And uh, just not, not a good environment. So I, at that point had to decide, Hey, am I going to continue to go down this vicious circle and wind up maybe in jail? Or am I going to like, you know, look at what's next? How do I get out of this? How do I be a good example for my two younger brothers? And the funny thing is, Dave, is um, I started seeing those Marine Corps commercials on TV do you remember those where the where the guys climbing up the mountain mm. and then um I at the end and <laughs> that's it man that's it you know he's like carrying the sword he's in his dress blues and i was like ah that's it you know i want to climb the mountain i want to overcome these challenges and show you know my two younger siblings man that like you know anything's possible when you get out of like just this toxic environment and uh in 2008 man i uh you know swore in to be united states marine corps and it, uh it, you know i always say it saved my life for sure. Yeah. So once I joined in uh, 2008, um, you know, I got into motor T. I was a motor T operator. Uh, man, during that time was amazing. I had some of the most deepest connections and bonds with men that I never even thought that I would ever have. Um, I was a guy that never saw consistency from a man growing up before the Marine Corps. So I didn't naturally trust men. Most of my friends, believe it or not, I was the guy that hung out with the girls. I was the, I was the one that the alpha men wanted to kind of get through. <laughs> I was in the friend zone, man. Oh, and, no. uh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, what's cool, what's cool is like, um, you know, I started getting these connections with these men. I started learning how to be, a, you know, be the leader of men that I always thought I could be and uh, build my self-confidence. And I got the honor and privilege to, you know, do a, um, a, a tour in uh, Okinawa, Japan, where I was there for about a year and a half, got to have some fun um, near Naha and all those, all those places. And I uh, did this seven month deployment um, in Afghanistan, where I was a part of a quick reaction force um, in a small fob out there where we were just, you know, I was a 240 gun Bravo gunner at that point. And, uh, you know, taught me a lot about life when you get away from the noise. And then it was and during that deployment where I decided that, you know, Hey man, I've done it all. Yeah. I've only been in for four years, but I did a combat deployment, got to get some as us Marines like to say, and, um, you know, got to be in Japan, got to see the world, broaden my perspective. And, um, you know, it was, it was time for me to move on. And at that point in 2012, I was just like, okay, um, you know, I'm still 24 years old. I have to, I'm 28 to get back into the United States Marine Corps. So if I screw this whole damn thing up, I can always go back. And the funny thing is, Dave, is, um, you know, when I got out, I walked out of the Marine Corps uniform and right into a sales uniform for one of the world's largest commercial gyms. And, um, you know, every good story, it, you know, there's a learned experience, right? So Absolutely. 12 months later, I was, I was one of the top producing sales reps at this company. And I still got laid off because I was overly professional I had no emotional intelligence. I had no people skills at all. And I was just so mission driven. I don't know if any of your listeners 
are listening to this that could relate to that. But I mean, when you get out, you know, when you're a Marine specifically in our parts, I was just so overly professional. I was mission driven. I was like, okay, what's the next thing to execute? Bah, 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 bah. And um, people just didn't feel connected to me. And it was like not a cultural fit. And they wind up pushing me out. And that led me to close to uh, two, not close, but two failed suicide attempts because I just lost my purpose, man. Um, I crashed and burned hard and I just didn't, I didn't know what I didn't know at that point. And that's when I started um, really realizing that, wow, I got to start looking in the mirror and um, stop blaming other people. And that was whenever I started realizing that, yeah, writing a resume, learning how to network and um, learning how to do interviews are great, but that's not going to make the lasting change. That's not going to make, create consistent results. That's going to have me living the impactful life that I felt like when I was serving in the Marine Corps. So that was when I made the decision after those two failed suicide attempts that I was going to be the author to my story. I love it, man. That's a, that's a wild story. And you know, it's funny. Uh, not a lot of people talk about the, the fact that you can in fact be almost not necessarily too good at your job, but too good at, so I guess a good analogy, David Goggins, I think, talks about that, right? Like in his book, how he was kind of an outcast. And part of it's because he was this just over the top, overzealous guy. And you figure in the Navy SEAL yeah. community, right? That's a little the little intense to think that that can be the case there. But it can, that's crazy to think, you know, oh, man, I was one of the top producing guys. And I just, yeah, there's got to be that human connection, right? Amen, brother. And I would just add to that. It's just like, yeah, you can be an overperformer, but I was often described as I was trying too hard. I was just trying too hard. And I wasn't confident in my own skin, brother. If I look back at it, I just, I, I was super insecure, had low self-esteem, didn't have a lot of confidence. And I'm, I was overperforming because I was trying to prove something. Going back to not having that father figure, you know, I was a guy that was just like, okay, maybe if I like become this like big sales guy at this company, you know, my dad will come back into my life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. And then I, I, you know, I like that you mentioned the, the purpose piece. We were talking about that before we recorded, but one of the main reasons for me starting to build this community was that I recognized, I well, can't take credit for that. I didn't recognize people enlightened me, but that not having a purpose when you get out of the military is probably one of the main things that leads to all of the struggles with transition, right? Because you go from making a difference in the world to what, right? what's next. And uh, so that's kind of why I started building this was to try to give myself a purpose. Uh, so I think that's kind of neat that that's similar, similar experience or not experience, but thoughts there. Yeah. Thanks for that, brother. Yeah. So then you go and do what probably, well, I don't know if this was the next step, but when we were talking, you invested a substantial amount of money into personal development, which yep. uh, I would imagine was, was something that if you were to mention to any Marine that you had served with, would probably tell you you were outside your mind because people look at me like I'm crazy for spending a couple hundred bucks to go to a conference. Um, but yeah, you know, kind of walk us through that. Yeah. Really. Yeah, that was, that was, that was a defining moment, right? I, you know, after, you know, two failed suicide attempts, you're kind of this, you know, and at that point too, I was living in an apartment I couldn't afford out here in San Diego, California, one of the most, you know, poverty stricken areas in city heights out here. The, the, that's the part of San Diego you do not want to go to. They say America's finest city. That's not the part. That's not the part. They're, they're not talking about that part. They're donut. Yeah, not, 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 not that part. <laughs> so it's just like, uh, you know, I was sleeping on a wrestling mat. I had a school desk to my name. I was eating chicken breast and black beans. And um, like I said, I was going nowhere quick. And, um, you know, I was going to, you know, a lot of free resource workshops and stuff like that. But I started realizing that hey, they had no emotional commitment to me actually getting results. They had grant writers that they were writing for their programs and, you know, funding for those. And they weren't getting paid off the results that they were getting for um, veterans. So I started having this like somewhat like paradigm shift. I was like, yeah, we have tons of free resources, but you know, there's no one like really, really committed to me getting results. It's kind of just like, Hey, here's how you write a resume. Here's how you interview. Um, here's some recruiters to plug into, 
But I was like, yeah, there's still like an emptiness inside of me. I don't feel fulfilled. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's whenever I was like, all right, screw it. You know, I started listening to the guys like Grant Cardone, Darren Hardy was the, one of the first guys I started following. I just love how white and black he was. He wasn't fluffy. He was just like, man, you're going to fail if you don't do X, Y, and Z. And I was like, okay, I get it. You know? And, um, he just spoke my language. Right. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I wind up, you know, making some great money in network marketing, um, had a couple sales teams throughout, you know, the United States, um, which I would travel and train them. And, uh, you know, I was going to school at Nash university, finishing up my psychology degree. So I had some money to spend. I was good at just keeping my expenses extremely low. So I got lucky enough to partner up with two other Marine Corps brothers of mine. And we invested over, um, at this point, I think this program that we invested into was over $12,000. It was success resources. Tony Robbins just became an investor inside the company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, brother, this course, Life Directions, inside that company transformed my life. It, I remember still to this day, um, you know, the trainer getting up on stage and him just saying, hey, look, you know, you are going to know when you're swimming with the current of life and also against the current of life. And I never heard those concepts, man. I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Just tell me the mission, tell me the resources, give me the mission objectives, give me my fire team and I'll get it done. I was like, what? You're doing this woo woo stuff. And, I, and, I, and all of a sudden I looked around, I saw my two brothers that were doing the program, you know, with me, Marine Corps brothers, and they were just like, let's do this thing. So we just like sat there, man. And I continued to listen to these concepts and I was just like, wow, like I am swimming against the current of life. At this point I was doing a network marketing company. I was, you know, doing um, six month workload in school down to one month at National University. For those of you guys that are listening to this that have done National University and I was grinding, busy, 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 but I was passion broke. I had no sense of direction. I don't know why I was doing anything I was doing. And all I thought success was, was making a lot of money. And it's just, at that point, I was just like, I had this like whole new aha moment in that moment. And I was just like, and he was just like, look, you can tell when you're, you know, flown with the current of life, when you are in your superpowers, when you're, you know, your core values, when you know your belief systems, where you're going, what your talents, gifts, and skill sets are. And I was just like, at this point, I was just like, uh, I don't even know, you know how to skill set translate or something like that, right? So, you know, then he was just, then he flipped the switch and this trainer was just like, you know what, you know, you've got to brand what you've mastered. And I was at that point, I was just like, brand what I've mastered. What have I mastered at this point? Well, it's not a lot. I mean, I've sold everything from a Kirby vacuum door to door. I've sold cable internet door to door. So fitness memberships, I mean, sales maybe, but I was like, what could I really make an impact in? And I was just like, man, it's the military transition. And from that day forward, I invested another like 20 grand on other transformative work and stuff like that. I'm still involved with the personal development and transformative community out here in San Diego today. I coach and lead leadership programs. I coach CEOs, professional athletes and all that. And, uh, you know, I dove into the trenches, Dave, and I started uncovering what is actually missing inside the military transition um, community today. And I, I started that in 2017. And um, what I found through diving into the trenches, studying veterans that were still in the uniform like yourself, ones that were just getting out, figuring it out, and even ones that were years out that were like killing it, crushing it in life, career, business. I, I, there was a trend that or appeared. And this is the trend is I found that, you know, it was community. Um, veterans didn't know what their next community to be involved in was. See, when I got out, I don't know if your listeners can relate to this or, or you, I went to the taps and tams. I went to these other free workshops, stuff like that, but it was all live and in person. You know, I was going to these workshops. They were giving me some great tools, but there was no accountability ongoingly or a, a tribe to stay accountable to or support. It was kind of like, here's the tools, go have fun with them. And, um, you know, I just, that just wasn't the right methodology for me. So I was just like, okay, community is definitely a, a big one that I was finding. Next thing was individuality. See, when we're in the uniform, we've got to be uniform to the guys and gals, the left and right side of us, right? If you have any sense of individuality, you're wrong. Right. So it's just like, and you're doing push-ups on the quarter deck. And you know, I did a lot, I did a lot of push-ups on the quarter deck. 
you know, honor, courage, commitment still ingrained in me, man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's understanding what those strengths, skill sets, and what your superpowers are. And then once you can identify those, you're going to know what communities to plug into. And then you're also going to be through the consistent actions, you're going to create the impact. And what I found mostly was that veterans that were getting out the three plus years out, man, they've got the first, second or third job, but they weren't feeling like they were making the Superman or the superwoman impact. They felt like they were um, fulfilling on why they were in the uniform, if that makes sense. And then I asked the why question to these, these guys do podcasting, blogging, you know, a Facebook group. I was like, so why is this the problem? And it was a trend. The senior enlisted commission officers that were getting out, they were just like, we don't know who we are. It's identity crisis. It's self-awareness. So from that day forward, man, I was just like, wow, I'm going to take over $50,000 of personal professional development that I have paid to play for my own development that's made me multiple six figures in life and um, helped me get a relationship of my dreams and have just super deep, deep connections where I just feel like I belong in the world outside the uniform, right? That's another big thing. And I'm going to repackage this and create programs and online community and opportunities for influencers like Dave here, you know, to plug into and, and promote and position himself as an expert. And that's the rest of his history, man. That's kind of how the whole ambitious vet movement was born. Man, that's crazy. That's just cool. I mean, to think about, for one, that you've only been out of the Marine Corps for like seven years, right? And yeah you have gone through, you've gone through some rough spells, but you've only been in the, you know, coaching sphere for, I mean, it hasn't been that long and you've had a ton of success. So to think of when you think back to like Marine Corps mentality where people, I mean, people scoff at you. It's funny because, you know, you go buy a brand new Mustang at 20% interest and like blow your (laughs) whole paycheck on it. And everyone's like high-fiving you and thumbs up and whatever. But you go and you spend, I don't know, 20 bucks on a book. It's like, whatever, you know, maybe not a book, but you know what I mean. People, people yeah. for personal development, it's kind of, got, it's almost like a bad name because you, oh, we got professional military education, which is great. But like, heaven forbid, you want to spend your money on it on your own. So to think that you went through a mindset change, not only in deciding to invest in yourself, because that in itself was a huge shift from probably where you were before to just see how much you've gone and just, I mean, your community skyrocketed, right? Like I got introduced to you from somebody who's probably uh, her, her podcast airs tomorrow and it, or next week. And it's probably one of the best podcasts I've recorded so far. Mm. And you're just, I say all this just to say that I'm very impressed with the amount of impact you're having. Oh, I appreciate that brother. Yeah. We're lucky. We're, we're lucky, man, that, um, you know, we, 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 uh, look for the long-term game. We, we've scaled this with strategic partnerships and, and stuff like that. We've bootstrapped, bootstrapped it since the beginning. And I'm proud to say that our overhead is less than a thousand dollars a month of being profitable since day one. Yeah. That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. And I would just add this, David, I would add this, man, for any of your listeners that are in real estate investing, see, you can apply these same core principles of personal development, even to this, right? So like, I'm not a real estate investor. Me and Maggie do want to, you know, potentially do that because Grant Cardone is one of my, you know, Midwestern boys that I believe in that he calls it white or black. He's not using fluffy words. And he says, tangibles are the best way to invest today. Right. And I believe that. So we're definitely planning on, but if you, you know, if you look at what are your skill gaps, your knowledge gaps, your human capital gaps, and actually being successful as a, even a real estate investor, right? You can start identifying, okay, wow, I need to know more about this. And then you ask yourself, why do I need to know more about this? That's when self-awareness comes into play and you can start understanding yourself in a different way. You know, one of the best quotes that I like to, you know, say is if, if, you know the why on why you're doing things, you can live out any how, right? A lot of people that are listening to this, you know, want to become a real estate investor, but they don't know why yet. And, you know, I shared this on a podcast I was on last night, actually. And uh, back when I was being a sales trainer, anybody that was signing up with us or, or whatever, I'd get up in front of the room, Dave, and uh, I would just ask them, okay, why are you here? And they're just like, what? What are you talking about? Aren't you supposed to be selling me something? No. Why are you here? And, um, I was, they were just like, um, well, I'm here to like make money. And I'm saying, okay, well, why, why, why do you want to make more money? And they were just like, well, I mean, 
I want to pay my bills. I mean, where, what are you getting? Where are you going with this, man? And I was like, awesome. So you want to make, you want to, you know, pay your bills. Great. Awesome. So why is that important to you? And then all of a sudden you just see people light up and they're just like, wow, like, no, I want to actually make my family proud of me. Right. And I was like, wow, that's it. That's what's going to give you the intrinsic motivation to go out there and just find the actions, become resourceful and just find stuff because Google is our new common sense. You can find anything on Google and uh, with this new connected age that we're in, you can leverage all these social media outlets to connect with people that used to be untouchable in literally 24 hours. So um, I would just encourage your listeners, Dave, to get down to why they want to be a real estate investor. If they're just still contemplating it and listening to your content and ask the three, three layer why. And then once they get to that spark, I'm like, wow, this is why I want to do it. Okay. Then what are the resources? What are the tools? What are the stuff that you need to start investing into paying to play um so you can become who you want to be quicker absolutely yeah paying paying to speed up the process a lot of people don't look at it that way but time is the one one thing you can't it's more valuable right than cash so paying to speed up time is it's powerful uh i would be curious and we're going to talk in a second about what this exciting new venture coming up but i would like to ask do you know or what not do you know um do you have any pointers for how someone might kind of help feel out personal capital gaps? I know you've mentioned that a couple of times. And that's yeah. not an easy thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, yeah, it takes work, man. I mean, um, even when you were sharing like before this, right, you said you were journaling when you were getting blown up and, and combat and stuff like that. Even that starts having, you start asking the difficult questions. Like, you know, how I used to start too, man, is I, I did the same thing is I used to wake up in the morning and be like, okay, I'm feeling off. I'm feeling anxious, right? Um, you know, why is this? And then just start writing. Why, why am I feeling anxious? Okay. What is the problem I need to solve today? What are my resources and stuff like that? Start creating critical thinking. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And I agree. Writing is very therapeutic. I think everyone should write. Oh, did we, are we still here? Yeah, exactly. And then I would just say like, identify what your primary aims are in life, right? So figure out what are the big three goals that you want to go after, right? And then, you know, start reverse engineering that. Um, you know, one of the things that's coming up is the Ambitious Fest Sprint, October 23rd, 2019. We're going to have one of our biggest um, sprints ever. This is our third one. It's really an opportunity for elite ambitious vets that are wanting more, but don't know the first step towards becoming it work together as a fire team to under, un, you know, just really uncover the landmines and, and what's stopping your momentum, your progress in areas of life that matter to you. So, you know, what the journey that we take them on is first, you, you know, uncovering what are your big three primary aims. A lot of veterans, when they get out, they don't even know what they don't even know how to go set, right? Let alone just like how to quantify it and track the progress, right? So we teach them how to create primary aims in life. Now from there, we have them do what we call a vow assessment where they actually start uncovering what matters to them. Like, you know, in the Marine Corps, honor, courage, commitment, it was ingrained in us. Our behaviors were shaped by those core values. Well, this program is gonna allow you, um, you know, as an ambitious vet to actually uncover what your core values are. So then we can start creating productive habits and routines from that that creates consistent results that fulfill and empower you. You know, Tony Robbins says it's best, says it best. If you increase your quality of life, it improves your follow through and your execution. If you know your core values, you're going to know how to create productive um, habits that create the fulfilling results that you want. From there, we take you through this practice through all the money that I've invested in myself. Um, that it's called the 15 minute miracle and it uncovers the landmines that stop you in your life and things that you're committed to and it's amazing there was a guy um, in our last sprint that realized that the thing that was stopping him was communication with his wife um, believe it or not it is always the small things that's why whenever yeah. you know <laughs> yeah it's always the small things man it's always the fundamentals that are stopping us and he wasn't communi communicating around how much debt to income they they had in their life and it was just killing him and 
you know, he actually admitted by the fourth session in intimate setting with a fire team of ambitious vets. We, and then from there, we got to equip him with tools to how do we communicate a Uh -oh. mm. oh no all right we're back <laughs> i'm still recording so i lost you at uh he hadn't admitted debt to income ratio Oh, you're muted. I love it. This is an adventure. There we go. All right. It's the best podcast so ever. Good thing ever. Yeah, it's, it's always fun. Uh, so um debt to income ratio, right? So he wasn't he wasn't communicating his debt to income ratio, right? So with that being said, think about it in your life. Where are you not getting where are you getting stopped by communicating? what is actually there where are you not being honest and he understood with his core values is like honesty was his number one he wasn't being honest with his his wife that was stopping him and executing creating results like you know creating more revenue inside the household um being able to create partnership with his wife so they can create solutions together and then once he uncovered that you know their household income raised by a uh, hundred thousand dollars um and you know he also you know, his wife actually went and got promoted because she actually found she got she got to hear her husband's heart in a way she's never heard it before. And now he is, you know, he, he's thriving. He's happy. He was just at the military Infantry conference and um, he's just so much more connected in who he is. He's com confident in his own skin. He does. He's not carrying that shame, if that makes sense. Um, from there, it really is. I'm going in biweekly with these with these uh with these veterans and the weeks that i'm not coming in dave we got subject matter experts from leadership development media experts we got a financial coaching coach coming in so we're hitting all of our we're dotting all of our i's and crossing all of our t's yeah that sounds thorough <laughs> that's super, <laughs> super cool thorough. So how long how long is the program it's 12 weeks man yeah, 12 yes weeks will change your life. It only takes 13 to become a Marine. So, you know, 12 <laughs> for the next best thing. <laughs> exactly. Bro. Oh, man. that's I mean, that's just cool because – so I'm a huge proponent of personal development. I, I mean, obviously, you can't start trying to run any kind of business without being. And, I mean, books, of, books and, and networking – kind of same thing to you. I started this podcast with the intent of being able to pick people's brains – and just network, right? Which is huge. Yeah. It's amazing what you get out of that. But you, Jason, you tailored a program specifically to veterans. And that's very unique. It's very niche down. But it's going to be so much more beneficial because any, any personal development program is going to help you out. But coming from somebody who's been in the military and done the transition and str had the transition struggle and then come back and been very successful as a guide through that time period, I mean, that's huge. That's super exciting. Yeah, man, it's it's not been it's 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 been a difficult challenge because um, you know I was just in a boardroom like on Thursday where we landed our first sponsor for this Sprint First Command, which is an amazing company, global, over 170 um, offices nationwide, and they actually threw some money at us. And the first thing that their strategic partnerships and their board members said right when I walked in with my pitch deck was just like we don't support um, you know companies. Um, that are for profit to help veterans. And I was like, okay, got it. No worries. I just continued to pull out my pitch deck. And by the time I was done pitching, everyone was just like, wow, this is amazing. And they were just like, and it's a niche narrow, like you said, Dave, that's three plus years out. Veterans are senior list and commissioned officers that understand that, um, you know, like you've got to start paying to play. You've got to invest into yourself. And, you know, here's the thing is I've invested, I've invested probably thousands of hours and, and done over hundreds of interviews with ambitious vets and top performing veterans on my podcast and even outside the podcast. And they've all admitted that they've invested in themselves at some point. 
it's calling the white elephant out. And see, I've, I've always been a guy from the Midwest. It's just like, be authentic, man. Look, we've all paid to play. Let's not, you know, say that we're not. And um, let's also guarantee results. So if you go to our website at vettraininggcoaching.com, you'll see that, you know, every one of our programs by fifth or seventh session, they get a personal money back guarantee, meaning that we're standing beside our product. We're not hiding behind grant writers. Um, we're not hiding behind the volume of veterans that we're putting through. Our, our sprint averages anywhere from five to 10 veterans that are really committed to actually getting results in their life. Um, and yeah, man, we're standing by our brand. It was funny because at the end when they were writing the check, they were just like, yeah, I get that this isn't a popular vote in here, but as a treasurer for first command in San Diego, California, he's just like, I just want to let you know that this is amazing and we're going to back you until, you know, you don't want to do this anymore. And I just, I just dropped down, I dropped my head down. I was just like, wow, we do have something here. And, um, if I could just speak into an ambitious vet's heart right now is like, you know, the reason why I did start this thing is I wanted to help you guys get ahead of the landmines that are coming. You know, a lot of veterans, they get that first job. And if that satisfies you, great. Awesome. If you're getting the bills paid, that's the only thing that matters to you. You want to live in, you know, you want to live in the glory days of serving. I get it. Trust me. I like to brag about my war stories and stuff like that as well. But this, this, this sprint, it's for veterans that know that the glory days are still ahead of them and they can actually utilize their intangibles to actually start creating more impact. And like, you know, Dave's intro to the show says, actually become a person worth knowing. Imagine that out of the uniform, you know, being someone that just attracts opportunity, you know, the right connections and, um, you know, just cash flow that you can create more impact. And that's, that's really why we're doing this. And that's why we have, you know, sponsorship money coming in so we can keep the cost of the program super low. Um, because I, I could charge well more than what we're doing, but we want to make sure there's skin in the game. So any ambition that coming in has an emotional commitment to get results in their life. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's just absolutely huge. And I, I, I love the fact that you keep bringing up the, the white or black feedback like Grant Cardone and Darren Hardy and all these guys. Cause I was just joking earlier today, I recorded the podcast on one of my buddies shows and I was like, man, I'm so sick of like these people who just tell you like, Oh yeah, that was good. Like, it's like uh, people who make it into American idol to try out and they're terrible because their family never had the cojones to tell them like you suck. Right. And, <laughs> and I'm like, those are the people I'm surrounding myself with. The more that I'm around, you know, I've got, I've got certain friends that are very prone. Like I know if I send them something, they will tell me if it's terrible. And like, those are the mm -hmm. guys I go to for advice. So I like that that's kind of your approach. Cause I think, I don't know if it's more veterans or more just people that I know, but that seems to be the way that resonates with people. Right. Cause it's like in this PC culture nowadays, people are afraid to tell you if you're wrong or afraid to tell you if you're going in the wrong direction. And that kind of tough love is what you need to really spur spur you on so yeah i i agree i agree man it's the the fluffiness has never been good for us i mean we've always had to communicate very succinct for the mission right if we wasted time overly explaining things i mean the mission wouldn't be done right so like i'm just taking the same old way of operating um, why we were in the uniform and applying it to here i mean they they need to get the truth out and um you know we're we have no problem creating a blue ocean um, per se for veterans that are three plus years out to say, Hey, you've got your first or second or third job. You realize that resume writing, interviewing and networking isn't, isn't necessarily the, the be all end all. Now let's start figuring out what matters to you. The job is easy to get out of the uniform. The job is easy. It's just, it utilize what they said, but is it th things that are fulfilling you as a human being? Because like Dave said, are you building your, your human capital? Are you building your social capital, creating the connections that are going to create consistent opportunity long-term in real estate investing, business, um, you know, career, life, whatever. It's really important, man. Yeah. And I would encourage any of you listening to, you know, and I'm, I'm not normally one to plug programs and stuff, but if you can think of somebody you knew who got out of the military and the military really was the best time of their life. They just hit a wall and that was it, right? We all know those people who got out of the military and that was it. They'd like, like we joked about before the show, they become a Walmart greeter or, you know, and <laughs> maybe they don't need to work and maybe they're totally content doing that. I would venture that the vast majority 
get stuck in a rut and that, and they struggle and that's the reality. So if you know people who got out and struggled, you know, and couldn't figure out what, what was supposed to come next, take a look, take a look into it. The ambitious vet podcast and the veteran training coaching and just look into what it entails to become something. So I can tell you right now that I am being fulfilled just as much by what I'm doing outside of the Marine Corps as what I'm doing in the Marine Corps. And going forward, you know, I know what my why is. I know that in order to accomplish that why, one of the big things is I need to control my schedule. And so I, you know, that's kind of my, been kind of my leaping, you know, there's, I could make it through the next nine years, but that's kind of been my, my springboard that I finally was like, yeah, it's time to get out because I need to be able to control my time, control my schedule to spend time with my family. I, I made a mistake this, when I moved here from Hawaii, I took a full 25 days off and it was the first like three week period that I've spent with just my family. And I was like, oh man, this is it. This is it. I can't, I can't. Nope, I'm done. Um, but it's amazing because people think that like it just kind of ends after the military, but it, you can, your life can be so much more fulfilling and it can just be the, the springboard to keep going. So definitely look into the, look at it, Chris and look into what he's doing. Yeah. I appreciate that, Dave. That means, a, that means a world to me, man. Dude, I love what you guys are doing online, right? I see your, your, your Facebook groups. I see you commenting all over the place. I see, you know, I, I just, it's cool. It's really cool to see veterans genuinely trying to help other veterans because there's a lot of noise. Not not just not that not that it's bad, right? But there's a lot of noise. You don't know you're coming up on transition. You don't have any idea what to do. And it's not because there's not options. It's probably because there's too many options. So it's it's good yeah. to see that you've found a way to like streamline that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I appreciate it, man. It's, um, it's like kind of what you're doing here, man, just putting in the work, um, you know, listening to the feedback loop. What do people that are actually engaging with us, what do they want? Not what I want. What do they want? And then just figuring out how, you know, your skill sets and, you know, your talents and gifts can align with that. It's real simple. Yeah. All right. Well, before we wrap this up, is there anything we didn't touch on? Any other big ideas or parting advice you'd like to hit on? Um, be resourceful. Um, you know, that has been one of the best intangible skills that, um, you know, I have, I have learned to establish, you know, there's a quote that's in my best selling book, 10 steps to predicted success out of the uniform that talks about the most dangerous thing in life is a resourceful idiot. You don't have to know all the answers. Okay. You just got to know how to find the solution. If you know how to do that, people are going to fall in love with you because what that opens up is a better connected network. You know, you can connect people, connect the dots. Some of the most, um, you know, affluent and influential people are the ones that know how to connect the dots, solve problems through their network and stuff like that. So I would say learn how to be resourceful in your life. And, uh, you know, it also gives you more time freedom. We're talking about real estate investing, time freedom to do more of what matters most to you. Yeah. Yeah, that resourcefulness is huge you'd be amazed what you can come up with by just knowing what questions to ask or where to find information. It's funny. We say that all the time in the Marine Corps, right? Everybody's like, Oh, I don't need to know the order. I just need to know where to find the answer. Absolutely. It's a reference. The problem is that we don't understand how to do that outside of the Marine Corps. So many people like, Oh, well now what? Like find an answer. It's like, it's amazing how, how helpful that is. So awesome. Well, yeah. Chris, where can people get a hold of you? I know we plugged the website already, but bring it back up and where else, where's a good place for people to connect with you? Yeah, man. I mean, any of you guys that are listening to this right now that are three plus years out, senior enlisted, commissioned officer that's just feeling stuck, unstopped, you know, just stopped in a certain area of life that you want to kind of break through and start creating consistent results. I invite you to, you know, visit vettrainingcoaching.com. Apply for the sprint. It's completely free. We're going to be announcing everyone that gets approved probably like the second week of October. Um, if you just want to kind of, um, you know, hold hands, I, I love holding hands as well. Come to the ambitious vet tribe on Facebook, or if you're more active on LinkedIn, go to the ambitious vet network and start plugging in so we can take you on the journey from warrior made to passion driven. I like it. I like your elevator pitch. That was good. That sounds good. That was a good, good pitch there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome hey chris thank you so much for joining us this has been a blast hey man it's been it's been amazing man thanks for having me dave absolutely
Thank you for listening to another episode about my journey from military to millionaire. If you liked it, be sure to visit from military to millionaire.com slash podcast to subscribe to future podcasts. While you're there, we'd love for you to rate the show. Give us a review on iTunes. Now get out there and take action.